Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about what's new in Onshape uh, in the latest release. So today is, is August 25th. The release went out last Friday on August 20th. Uh, we're pretty excited about this release. There's some great new functionality. So we're going to run through all of it in today's webinar. My name is, is Daniel Kane. I'm on the technical services team here at Onshape of PTC Business. Uh, so I actually wrote the forum post last Friday. Um, so excited to run everybody through uh, all the new functionality that, that we rolled out. Uh, a bit of an agenda here today. Uh, we're going to run through what the updates are uh, and kind of how we roll them out, right? Some of the protocols behind how you receive new functionality in Onshape. And then some of the highlights of the latest release, which is version 1.135. Um, the, the topics that, that we'll cover today include a new uh, upgrade to the, to the replicate command. Within Onshape assemblies, it's now fully parametric. So we'll run through what the differences are on that front uh, and what that allows for you in the assembly space. Uh, we rolled out Italian localization for any Italian speakers uh, or maybe coworkers in, in other parts of the world. Uh, you can now use Onshape in Italian. Uh, limits on ball mates, right, allow, allowing you more control over those. The new support for PVZ export. Uh, and what that means when working with other uh, other softwares and other other uh, functionalities, the ability to define up direction on flat patterns, as well as the ability to reference toroidal edges in drawings. Uh, to wrap up, we'll go through where you can access the change log right for all the other changes that were a part of this release, uh, as well as a couple other places for resources uh, to look. So kind of the format and, and how we're going to do this. Um, is, is kind of go through a slide of each update and then show it live in Onshape. But first, right, how do we roll these out, right? Onshape is updated every three weeks automatically. Every three weeks, we will push an update to the single source of truth that we have running. All users are constantly on the latest version of Onshape. There is no question, hey, are you on, you know, which version are you on? You're guaranteed to be working on the same version of Onshape as every other user in the world. And when you receive these updates, there's no downloads, there's no installs, right? You simply receive them. You probably received a notification if you've been in the platform recently uh, that'll point you to our documentation. We're always improving the product, right? New functionality, improvements on existing functionality. Uh, so it's always exciting. Uh, and we're particularly excited about, about this release. So if I move forward here, give me just a second. So the first one, uh, I think is probably the biggest one in this release. So we'll spend the most time on it or vary kind of the amount of time we spend on each of these. But the first one is the parametric replicate command. Uh, this is very important for enhanced control over replicate. Uh, so we'll talk a bit about kind of what it was previously and what's now possible because the replicate, as you can see on this image, will show up as a feature in your instance list in your assemblies, giving you the ability to go back and edit it, as well as the ability for it to detect changes to the geometry and update appropriately. So if I slide over to Onshape here, um, we're gonna we're gonna start with kind of how this works and how this looks, right? So replicate in the past right the interface itself is not going to feel different when you're initially using it right what we're going to do is essentially choose a couple instances in our assembly that are already mated right in this case i'm going to choose maybe this hardware stack here and what we have the ability to do is essentially automatically detect and identify other faces or other geometry that matches where this was made Right, this was made into a particular hole or a particular edge on this disk here. And what I can do is now find other faces that match that within, or other edges that match that within a specified face. Right, so very easy to essentially find and drop in a bunch of geometry just based on finding matches automatically. The difference here though, is as I confirm this, 
What used to happen is you'd have a bunch of instances show up and a bunch of mate features show up, and then essentially the, the command would be in the past, right? It would be something that you've done, and there was sometimes difficulty in going back and updating it or updating based on changes to the geometry. So what we'll see here is if I actually extend this dropdown, I can clearly see all geometry and all components that are produced as a result of this replicate command. I believe I have 14 instances here that were dropped in automatically, as well as the mate features for all 14 of those. Right? This can significantly clean up both your instance list as well as your mate features list because you can see and sort of collapse all of the features that were generated because of this command in replicate. Now, a couple important differences is I now have the ability to go back and actually change my inputs or change my selections. Right, if I now want you know, a different type of bolt, or maybe I just want to, to replicate the bolt and not necessarily uh, all of the, the washers as well, right? I can go back and, and choose that. So let me just choose this one more time. Uh, it's actually mated to the washer, right? So this will be easier to, to demonstrate in the washer front. Um, but what you can do, right, is go back and change these at any point. Uh, I think I know what why that was messing up, right? Maybe we want to change to matching individual edges, right? We can do that as well. The limitation we were running into there is that these are only work for components that are mated to one other component. If you have multiple mates, it doesn't work, right? The logic doesn't necessarily work as we're running through this. The other important difference is that as I go, say, back to my part studio and modify some of this geometry, right? Say we modify this pattern, right? We now want 10 holes evenly spaced around. What would happen in the past is, is the references would be lost potentially, and you wouldn't see updates to the newest one. But now because it's a feature, it will behave parametrically, and we'll see these updates as the geometry changes. So some use cases here, why, why is this important? You think about configured assemblies, right? Where maybe you have a conveyor where the length is gonna shift and you want your rollers, the, right, the amount to update with it, right? If I just enter a new length here, I'll see that my replicate command and the features associated with it are gonna respond accordingly. I see new features show up, I see new mates automatically added. So it gives you flexibility, right? And allows your designs to be very robust because of this functionality. So definitely recommend going and playing with it, test it out. It can really save you a lot of time in the assembly space. So the next one, we'll, we'll do this one relatively quickly, uh, is the new ability to have Italian localization, right? So we are constantly trying to add more languages to provide accessibility and usability for people across the globe. And with this latest release, we rolled out Italian in Onshape, right? So how we actually do this, if you have interest in it, is you go to your own preferences, right? If I go back here and I go to my account, I'll go to my preferences and be able to change the display language, right? So I'm currently in English, I am an English speaker, but if you'd like, you can go to Italian and save that language. This will bring you back to the login screen, right? So that things can refresh upon sign-in, but as we do this, we'll now see that all the standard things, right, all the on-shape specific elements are translated to Italian for me. So I'm gonna go back. The tricky thing here is always making sure you can navigate back in that other language, but I'll save it again and I'll sign back in. Whoops, went backwards. So the next one I wanna to touch on is additional improvement to assemblies. And this one has to do with adding limits or constraints to ball mates. In the past, there was no ability to constrain where a ball mate could rotate. But with this added functionality, you can now define that, essentially a cone of rotation. We'll, we'll look at this in detail in just a second. And this allows you to add these type of constraints to add stability to your assemblies. So the example I have here may actually hit home for some people who have gone through it in our training course. Um, this hexapod assembly is generally particularly unstable when you're doing this in the learning center. So this addition really makes this 
uh, quality of life improvement. So the way this works, right, within a ball mate, right, a ball mate essentially lines up two points and keeps them fixed and then allows rotation in all directions around that. The new feature with ball mates is the ability to apply limits. As you can see, if I don't apply a limit, I have free motion here, right? This can, can rotate anywhere it likes and potentially interfere with other geometry. But now what I can do is apply a 20 degree limit between the two Z axes, right? So essentially you're lining up the Z axes and then from there, you can only rotate within a specified cone of rotation that you can maybe see as I animate this. So this generally can add stability and, and prevent uh, interferences, right? If you want to make sure geometry doesn't interfere. And maybe just to give some people who have gone through our learning center, um, whoops, uh, right? Without this, generally you'll find a lot of instability here. But you'll see as you come back to this with these constraints, there's no flipping, right? It's a very well constrained, well defined assembly. Now, some potential applications, right? I think this is a good example um, is say a joystick controller, right? That is, this is sort of a classic uh, ball made example. This needs to be able to rotate around kind of at will, but you want to be able to keep it within these limits here. So these new constraints will help with that type of application as well. So a bunch of different potential applications. Uh, main takeaway, right, is the ability to fully constrain this uh, and really make it so that it's preventing interferences or just staying within the, again, the cone of rotation that you desire as you're setting it up. So check it out, right? See how it can, how it can improve your assemblies and your mating. So the next one here is the ability to export into the PVZ format. So for those of you that are not familiar, uh, PVZ is a lightweight and IP protected uh, format, mainly for viewing. So parts and assemblies, you'll now see the ability in your dropdown here to choose PVZ. And this is particularly useful for working with other PTC applications, right? Things like wind chill or Creo View and also Vuforia. Right, very, very useful for creating AR augmented reality experiences within Vuforia to then use and share for design reviews or for whatever you'd like. Right, so you can see here I have an example of, of working with this within Vuforia, right? You can create and sort of create the surroundings to your experience, and then you can share and collaborate with other users. Right, you can see here actually on the phone on an app, you can quit. Uh, very easily access it. I have some more documentation in the What's New forum post uh, on some of the particular softwares to use this in, but very useful for any AR, uh, you know, sort of post-processing of your CAD data, right? So again, any part or assembly, you'll now see this option in the format drop. All right. So big improvement to sheet metal, right? And control over sheet metal flat patterns. In the past, you did not have the ability to specify what is the up direction within your flat pattern. So what this resulted in is, is no, in drawing space in particular, there was a lack of control over what was an up bend versus what was a down bend and what is being seen when you drop in the top view of a flat pattern. You'll now see an option in the sheet metal model tool to flip direction up. So if you're creating a model and the sheet metal pattern is not oriented the way you would prefer, simply tick that box and it will update. So what this is going to look like, if I jump over here. Again, within the modeling space, if I pull out my flat pattern viewer, and let me go to sheet metal model two is the one we're gonna focus on. Right within this drop down here, if I hit the final button, I'll see this option to flip direction up. So once this process is real quick, 
we'll go ahead and see what this results in you know in the final the final model the final view here right if i want i can flip this and i'll see it update such that now uh i'm seeing the other side right things are reoriented uh relative to the up direction right so we now have control over which direction is up on our flat pattern what this ends up meaning in the drawing space is that down bends can now become up bends, right? This can become reoriented based on changes to that sheet metal and to that flat pattern, right? So significant improvement and addition to the control that you have over your flat patterns within Onshape. One thing I didn't mention at the beginning of this, um, within GoToWebinar, there is a questions panel. Um, so if you do have any questions that come to mind as we're running through this functionality, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, so don't hesitate to pop anything in. You don't have to wait till the end, right? As they come to mind, if there's anything we've already talked about, you have questions about, or in this particular feature, don't hesitate to go ahead and put those in the questions window. Having said that, I think I, you know, I do apologize. We're already, you know, getting toward the end when I brought that up, but um, but still, feel free to to put those in, and, and we can cover them in in due time. So the last one that I want to cover is a big update to drawings, particularly in how we're able to reference toroidal components. Right. I mean, most common example here is going to be any sort of spring design, right, where it's not a true cylinder unless it's in profile right the profile views can now be treated as arcs in the drawing so you can reference radial dimensions right in profile this is a true circle and in the past right this would not be seen as such in the drawing space making it difficult to identify the outer and inner radii of these drawings and of these components but with this update, anything that is in a toroidal uh, orientation, now in drawings will be able to be referenced as arcs. So if I pull up uh, that spring that I was just displaying and go to the drawing itself, again, these particular edges here, right, in this profile view are now seen as arcs and allow me to drop in radial dimensions with ease, right? Something that in the past may have been sort of hacky, right? Whether it be sort of inserting hidden sketches or generally using workarounds to actually get this to display correctly is now simple and is now easy within the drawing space for any toroidal component that you're trying to dimension and reference. So, um, I I'm not seeing any questions coming in. That was the last uh, update that I wanted to go in depth on. However, there are more changes that we did not get to here in this particular webinar. Uh, so what I'll point you to is our change log. So I have a screenshot of it here. You can also always go to our website, onshape.com slash change log. See all the detailed changes, right? Some of these are more back end, so we don't necessarily present them either in the forum or in this in this format. Um, but it, if you have interest, you can see every particular, every detailed change within here. So this is uh, 1.135. The change log also contains previous releases and all the historical changes to Onshape dating back to the beginning. So definitely recommend checking that out, investigating if that's of interest to you. And also, right, I definitely point you to our help menu within the question mark uh, near the top of, of your screen, right near your own name. You'll see the help documentation, all new features. We also update our help documentation. So things like parametric replicate or ball mates, right? You'll see updates in the actual documentation. We can also, jump right to the what's new to see the forum posts that again goes into a bit more detail on some of these things uh, as well as our forums where some of these things these new ones are are discussed as well as our support mechanism right you can file a support ticket if you have particular questions or issues with any of these new functionalities so i do see some questions coming in 
have you updated so you can export from Onshape based on display states? Uh, in assemblies, I do not believe that this is an update in this latest one. I do not believe that is possible right now from assemblies. What I would recommend is utilizing configurations uh, to determine what is suppressed and unsuppressed to then help you export those particular configurations uh, to kind of replicate the, the functionality that you're mentioning. Uh, another question kind of unrelated to the what's new, is there a way to save whole project locally and take it off the Onshape server? Any data from Onshape can be exported, uh, whether it be parts, assemblies, or drawings. You can export them locally to have uh, in a variety of different file formats, uh, whether it be things like STEP or Parasolid, uh, or we showed even today PVZ, right? Always adding to that list as well. So uh, the one other one regarding PDF files exported from Onshape, I would recommend filing a support ticket. You can see the contact support mechanism here. Uh, I think that is probably your, your best route to identifying any issues that you're having upon export. I do appreciate the participation, right? I love these, love having any questions here. For that particular one, I, I think the better forum would be either to uh, file a support ticket or also, right, I'll put my email on these and point you to, to some of the other um, resources that you have, uh, things like the Learning Center, things like the change log, as well as the system check, right? If you're having any compatibility issues, I definitely recommend utilizing that system check uh, capability. Uh, but other than that, right, the help, the forums, the support mechanism, as well as, right, if you have any particular questions, I'm happy to get back to you via email. Uh, my email is dkane at ptc.com uh, and, and I'm happy to, to work with you directly to support some of these things or get you in touch maybe with the right people or the right support for what you're looking for and what you're looking to accomplish. So I don't see any other questions. Uh, I believe you will be provided with a recording of this presentation after the fact. Uh, if you want to go back and review certain things or if you've signed in late. Um, also, I'll, I'll leave my email here. Uh, feel free to reach out really at any point. And again, I'll point you in the right direction. So with that, I think we'll uh, give you a couple minutes back to your day. We're wrapping up a little bit early here. Always better than being late. Um, and, and I appreciate the attendance. Have a great day, everybody.